Make ours marvel. VOR mm-hmm. is back. This is Ed. This is Mike, and I'm Terry Gant from Third Coast Comics, 6334 North Broadway, Chicago, Illinois, 60660. And I didn't mention this in the other two days we did this. I'm at Doc Midnight on Twitter and at Third Coast Comics with 3RD. There you go. So act like you don't know, bitches. Act like you don't know. <laughs> Give it a shot. I dare you. Try it. Great. So uh, yesterday we were um, we're talking Marvel movies, and we we're just starting to get into uh, the phenomenon of Black Widow, sure. her success through these movies, and um, just talking about uh, uh, women, just the, the forgotten women of Marvel comics, sure. and especially the Avengers. And um, it's just you know it just looks like it's yeah follow the money, chase the money, and, right. and just you have. Uh, what you call the, the the ninja hero, right? And um, you know, big booby redhead ninja hero. Sure. Which to me, I agree. And when I when you mention strong, the, the buzzword is strong female character, right? And when you do an animated movie, it seems like nine times out of ten, it is a tough kung fu redhead. Right. And I'm sorry, wisecracking kung fu redhead or stoic kung fu person. Right. And these movies have just been coming out since, like, from Nikita, and uh, they just keep going back to it. Right. And now we have Marvel's version of it, and somehow this is not boring to anyone. And here's, I think that it's <clears throat> it's kind of a two-pronged problem, right? The reason why you're you're constantly getting super sexy ninja chick as the trope to go with for female characters in action movies, the reason you're doing that is because, in a way, or you're getting that is because, in a way, as a comic book going audience, the very source material, right? The female audience is somewhat, it, it's so ignored that there's no one out there thinking, man, do we gotta? Like, where, why can't we do something involving any of these other characters throughout the history of these comics and add them to the mix? They don't do it because they actually don't believe that women are gonna read these comics anyway, right? Yeah, they Since still they, don't They don't believe that women, there's, I think there's an actual, number, there's a quantifiable number at which once women read comics above this percentage, they will be believed to be a valuable part of the audience. I don't know what that number is hmm. because 50% of my customers are women now, right? So that being the case, I've got a shit ton of women in my shop who are reading all kinds of things, and this is also sometimes part of the problem. Since women will read Batman, and women will read the X-Men, and women will read the occasional thing involving Super Somebody, they'll read Green Lantern. Since they'll read those books as well as reading Saga and Pretty Deadly and you know, manifest destiny and lumberjanes. You know, they'll they'll since they'll do that. Publishers and, and, and creators of content don't see it as paramount to raise the numbers and awareness of characters who are not super sexy ninja chicks. Mm-hmm. If oh, I can sell you Batman, why am I not going to sell you Batman? You know. Yeah. But can I ask this? And it's been well, you've been in business for six years, but you've been in reading and. You've been a comic person sure. for your life. Would you not agree that women readership has gone up like crazy in Certainly. like the past like five years? I mean, for, for the first time ever, because I, I, you know, I started, you know, I obviously read comics as a little kid, but that was Seven Eleven. You know, right. go to Seven Eleven or the grocery store, the Archies and things like that. Um, the 90s is where I, I started buying my own comics because when I started making my own money. There were never girls, females, women in these stores. Now, it's huge. And now, I can also say from doing shows, um, doing shows, people are buying less and less comics. People want more tchotchkes and more kitty hats and uh, merch. And there are more women every single year. And there are more, co- you know, cosplay brings it in. Um, merch brings it in, and they're starting to read the books as well to an extent. I think it's just the trend now is opening up to women. You're focusing on women, but the women are also have to be placed in the films. This is old content. They're kind of shoehorned into a, sort of a type, and the super sexy ninja chick I think is the best thing we can give them. It's the it's the least insulting thing we can give them. Hmm. 
I don't like, know what else they're gonna make. At least and so like there's <laughs> the the content creators can always find a way to be more insulting. You oh, know? I get, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you give them a minute, man, they will they will go out of their way to do something insulting in a New York minute. I think that. To me, I saw women, I saw that thing change. I, I used to work in the 90s in a kind of a typical fanboyish comic shop, right? Mm -hmm. And then Sandman hit shelves. And once Sandman hit shelves, all of a sudden there were girls from art schools mm -hmm. just crowding the floors in a good way, like picking up comics and, and just loving what they were getting. And when then content providers saw that that was a thing that women were interested in, it, it was an influx, and it didn't go away. Right, those people by and large stayed around, and if they got priced out or, or life circumstances changed, they didn't really treat it like comics weren't made anymore. A lot of men do that, but women don't. What they did instead was they said, "I can't, I, I won't go and get my material the way I used to get it. I'll get it a different way, but I'll still get it." Right, and now you, what you're seeing is thanks to the internet, right, and thanks to there being a con somewhere every five minutes, right, mm -hmm. you are seeing a whole lot of people more than willing to pay an admission fee. Or post on Tumblr or troll Tumblr or well, troll it rather than troll it. You know what I mean? Like they will they will scrape for content any place they can to get more of what they want, and they're doing it faster than content providers can make it, right? But they're still not being respected and treated as equals. You know, you got a super sexy ninja chick in the movie because some filmmaker, some beloved filmmaker, who is so great with female characters just didn't think hard enough about changing something that is damn easy for him to do. Mm. He loves the super sexy ninja chick, our buddy right. Joss Whedon. <laughs> but right. here's the thing. Aren't these, aren't the, aren't the movies at least, you know, like we know, like we talked about earlier, they're, they're designed to appeal to mass audience sure. because the business of movies is business. It's not about catering to every fan or worrying about the reputation of these characters as far as their, their comic backstory. That's nobody has that much time or money to do these stories. But on the other hand, on the upside, is the success of these movies isn't that helping comics? Isn't that helping bring more money into the shop? Nope. People aren't coming off the street and like no. my kid fucking loves Iron Man. Not not in a measurable way that so all right, for the Avengers, this is an example we always use. The business that saw the uptick from the Avengers success, from all that cash brought in there, was the shawarma business. Shwarma. Those characters ate shawarma on screen. Everybody wanted shawarma right after that. Nobody, like, so Coulson gets shot, or he gets stabbed, right? Coulson's dead, and there's something in Coulson's pocket. Fucking trading cards of Captain America in his pocket. The trading card market is fucking long dead, right? Yeah. It's not like Coulson's locker was full of Captain America comic books. If they, were, if they show comic books on screen, they'd be like, then people would be like, oh shit, comic books are cool. That's right, this does come from somewhere. Hmm. That's pretty fucking dope. Every time somebody talks about Sin City, the first thing they say is, you know it's shot directly from the comic book. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always, it's like a thing that they know, but the filmmakers can't wait. It's like their embarrassing secret, you know? You've made yeah. an incredibly erotic R-rated film that's going to win you awards, but you've effectively made porn, but we can't say porn. <laughs> right. You know, you're inspired by Andrew Blake films. We can't say his name. You know, because that's porn. This is art. You know, it's bullshit. Like, wow. just run, run. And you, when was the last time you saw a Marvel movie or even a DC movie? I, I seen a Warner Brothers movie once. I know of one movie that did have an ad for graphic novels, and I believe it was after the film ended. If you stayed for the through the credits of this one film, you saw a graphic novel ad, and that happened to be Green Lantern, and Green Lantern stunk. So not a lot of people stayed through the credits. Right? Right. That's the only one that's ever done it. Marvel films have never even said, "If you dig this, read this." <laughs> You like this Marvel film? Jonathan Hickman's been writing a great uh, Avengers run for a couple of years. You like this Batman film? Scott Snyder, Frank Miller, you know, Denny O'Neill. Like, they've never said, go read these guys' stuff at your local comic shop. You can see what a damn comic shop is. You've seen it, you'll find one. Isn't it just implied? Doesn't everybody know they're comic characters? It says at the front, doesn't say Marvel Comics. It says, yup, property of Marvel Comics. It does not say, and go read some. Hmm. Give right. us money for it. It never says that. And people do what they're told in films. Right? You were told to eat shawarma. You were told to go download more than a feeling or whatever the fuck from Guardians of the Galaxy, and you went and did it. You know? The only the only wow. natural the only natural response we come up with is I'll bet there's a T-shirt that will look great with that raccoon on it. Yep. I'll bet there's got to be a raccoon T-shirt. Easily. Or got Groot or something. I don't know. <laughs> I've like, seen that shirt actually. Yeah. I just I thought I made that up. Yeah. I've seen folks taking pictures, taking selfies in front of dumpsters here in Chicago because we have a, a waste a waste disposal company called Groot. 
right? Oh, really? So there's a whole lot of dumpsters, you know, <laughs> getting to <the> work out. <laughs> the group waste management company is getting a big push because oh, yeah. they're called group for Christ's sake. Oh, yeah. oh my God, that's I'm awesome. Graffiti, you know, we are. I, I have to. What I have to do in order to make money from Marvel movies or anybody's big nerd movie is I rent a theater in Evanston, which is near my shop. So I'm like four miles, three, four miles away. I rent a movie theater. We do a early release, like a midnight show or a 10 p.m. show. I get to sell tickets in my shop. I turn all that cash over to the theater, right? I, I get a guest list. We have our own theater. We have a bartender inside of our theater. So within an hour of uh, signing in, you get to go in the theater, pick your seat. There's a bartender that's taking your drink orders. I do a, a giveaway. So basically, I will be raffling off the graphic novels and the comics that Marvel has made or DC has made or whoever's made from whatever this film is. You will walk home with content that inspire the thing you're watching on the screen. And you'll know Third Coast Comics did that for you. Right? I would rather directly have an impact on my, the future of my shop because I know that Hollywood doesn't give a fuck. Right. Yeah. I love that. I love that, bringing it back to books. That's great. Always. Yeah. yeah. If this was any other, if, if this was like, you know, if the Three Musketeers got a movie, right, it would, be, it would not be anything, it would be nothing like the book, and there would be people out there saying, just read the book, man. You know, when it's a Marvel movie, it's like, oh, shit, Guardians of the Galaxy. I can't wait for part two, and no one ever says, let's go buy the book. Yeah. You know, I still yeah. sell the book to people. I've sold lots of those books, but I've sold a lot of those books before the movie came out. Mm. Right? There was yeah, a lot no, of it's funny. to do it. You know what's funny, and it's hey, I'm just giving you this. I'm just giving you this. I don't know if it's good or not, but right. hell, part two is probably already on sale in your store. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like the yeah, the follow up right. information is already available. Yeah. You can already yeah. get it. Yeah. So, yeah, it happens all the time. Hey, people, after, uh, keep out there. A Dame to Kill For, it's like 20 years ago. It's been out for like 20 years. <laughs> Thank you, right? Part two, three, three through seven are already in the right. store. Right. <laughs> I was wondering, I was actually wondering about that because I thought that Yellow Bastard went after A Dame to Kill For. And Yellow Bastard was what I think was part of the first they one. They put him in the first movie, yeah. Yeah, so they spliced that up. But, yeah, with the, especially with the Guardians of the Galaxy kids, man, if you want to know anything else, it's all out there at his store right now. Third Coast Comics, 6334 North Broadway, Chicago, Illinois, 60660. What? 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 com. What anonymity? <laughs> the internet. There is no anonymity on the internet. That is really hard to say. I'm one. It's very Googleable, actually. <laughs> it's really Google you can you can catch me out there on the internet, sober and drunk ranting. So yeah, you know, that's a thing. Uh, awesome. I'm out there. Uh, definitely. So um, cool. Well, that wraps up today. All right. And um, so t let's see. That is that's three. That's three in the bag. Look okay. at us. Yeah. All right. So um, tomorrow we're gonna come back. We got some Republic comms and feedback, and uh, I think a little more chit chat with Mr. Terry again. Sure. Good. Cool. Good. Are we just gonna free verse it on this last one? Just free verse it and just talk some shit. We're gonna. We're yeah. We'll just like we'll, we're gonna fill a bucket with names and events, <laughs> like people we know, people we don't know. Um, yeah, historical events. You know, War of eighteen twelve. We're just gonna. What up? Go. Take them down. Let's just take them down. They call it the War of 1812, but really, most importantly, is 1811 that led up to it. The prequel was the shit. Oh, you'd save it for the. Oh, <laughs> <magic>. <laughs> still blowing your wad. Come on. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, hey, check us out vorradio.com, and uh, with links to everything: Facebook, Twitter. If you like the Twitter. Kids love the Twitter. Um, Republicom, which the next segment will get a voicemail or two. And uh, email if you don't like to speak or hear the sound of your own voice. But we want to hear from you. Uh, also, feel free to leave a comment on YouTube and subscribe. You get a chance. Um, cool. So that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Make you start. And may the force be with that. <laughs> nice.